Hey guys, what's up? So one of us is in distress. The man lost his car to fraud. The fake EFT thing scammers are doing these days. This is the car he was trying to sell. The Golf 5 GTI. Fortunately, this beauty was found. But the people who are responsible for giving the car back to him are constantly giving him the runaround. So he want me to share his story. Hoping that someone here can advise him on how to get his car back. He want his car back before it rot away in the police car pound. So I'm gonna tell you his story in his own words. I posted my vehicle for sale on the 24th of September 2022. A man named Darren inboxed me about the vehicle. He said he's in Kimberley in the Northern Cape, but he'll drive to Bloemfontein where I live to buy the car. I agreed to meet him immediately when he get to Bloemfontein. Around 4 p.m. he arrived with two other guys. He test drove the vehicle and he was satisfied with the vehicle. And now it was payment time. He said his mother will make EFT payment, so I should send him my account number via WhatsApp. Within a few seconds, he forwarded me a proof of payment on WhatsApp, but the money was not reflecting in my account yet. While we were waiting for the money to reflect, I gave them the car documents. This included the previous owner's ID copy because I had the car for only two months. And I haven't changed the car to my name due to busy work schedules. The other guy called Carl, who was referred to as uncle by the guy who was buying the car, pulled out a yellow paper for me to sign so that they will be able to change the car into his name. I asked him where he got the document from and he told me he owned a garage in Kimberley. The same guy then asked if there's any tracker in the car. For some reason I said no. And looking at his facial expression, I can see that he was relieved. At this point, everything seemed cool. I was only focused on my phone waiting for the bank notification. We waited for almost an hour, and I even tried calling my bank, but there was no answer because it was on weekend. Now the uncle started giving me pressure, saying that they have to leave because they live far away, and the money will reflect, and that they cannot do anything bad because they are Muslim, and it is haram. I gave them the car and the papers and they left. I couldn't sleep at night. I kept watching my phone waiting for the bank notification. On Sunday he asked me if I've received the notification. I told him no and he said he will ask his mother to call her bank. By Monday morning I knew that I have been scammed. I tried calling the guy, he was not answering my phone and he was not answering my WhatsApp messages either. So I went to the bank for bank statements and there was nothing. So I went to the police to open a case of fraud. I called the previous owner and told him what happened because I remember him telling me that there's a tracker in the car but he was going to cancel it. Likely the tracker was still active and he sent me the GPS coordinates of the car's position. I called the tracker company and they located the vehicle at a panel beating shop in Kimberley. I drove to Kimberley to this panel beating shop. There were two police officers and the guys from the trekking company, but the owner of the panel beating shop did not want the police to take the car. A superior police officer came and ordered the car to be repossessed because the so-called owner of the car was nowhere to be found. And that uncle guy has already registered the car in his name. Now here is the tricky part. The Kimberley SAPS booked the vehicle, but sent me back to Bloemfontein because that's where I originally opened the case. I went back to Bloemfontein and met with an investigator. I explained everything to him and he said he will go to Kimberley for the docket and he will also arrest those guys. After a week I called him and he said he was not able to go to Kimberley but he will go to Kimberley the following week. Another week passed and he said he's waiting for a vehicle to go to Kimberley with. Yeah that's what's going on guys and he says every time he calls this investigator guy he always give him excuses. From September until now the car is still in Kimberley. He even asked this investigator guy if he should get a lawyer and he told him that he will be wasting his money. So the man says he need advice on what he should do to get his car back. If you have any idea what he should do, please let us know in the comments. Should he hire a lawyer? The car is sitting in the pound collecting dust in another city, in another province for no good reason.